to pause for a while for our opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Loving Father, thank you very much, Lord, for giving us this wonderful opportunity to meet with Abilit too. Thank you also, Lord God, for giving us the knowledge and the wisdom. Thank you also, Lord God, for giving us the food, the water, the fresh air, the free oxygen, and of course, for giving us good health, guidance, and protection that we were able to be here alive and kicking um, until this very moment. Lord, as we go on with our different discussions, two discussions on the translation theory and practice, continue to bless us with the gift of understanding, knowledge, and the wisdom so that we may be able to comprehend the lessons very well and, of course, the lessons of life. This we give you thanks and asks in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Once again, good afternoon. A bit late to... Good afternoon, good afternoon. Miss. Good afternoon, Miss. Good afternoon, Miss. Good afternoon, Miss. Hi, ladies. I like the pom-poms. What's that? Headband, man, siya, Eflin, no? That's your headband. Mickey Mouse, yung effect. Okay, man. And also, ako diri, ha? O kinsan yung mga naadiri. We have Leonila. The smiley face. And of course, we have Stella, ang eyeglass, no? Uh, Antay Rad, siguro ni siya. Ella is here as well. And of course, the... Sani, ang kitten, ang kitten ni Mary Death. And we are having kinsan ni, just coming in, Mary Death. No, Mabeth, the Emma Beth and Michelle. Okay, so this afternoon, uh, we are be uh, we will be dealing with the uh, with the functional theories of translation. There are two, by the way, functional theories of translation. Uh, this is from Katarina Rees. Nyanabut tayo ng systemic functional uh, theory of translation ni Michael Halliday. But this afternoon, we will focus on the functional theory ni Katarina Rees. Um, why these topics are included in the in the study of translation because both of these theories has this kind of effect that will allow the analysis of the translation to prosper. In language, we have this Roman Jacobson's language functions. Okay, in literature as well, they also have this term used. Na asila uh, different analysis, this um, um different uh, critical theories. Yes, sa literature. So translation put nga field, they call it as um uh, functional theories. Okay, what makes it functional? Because this has something to do with an operation or it's a process of bringing the source text to the target text. And what type of text type is this text? Okay, if in literature we call it as piece or a literary piece, in language we call it as statements or phrases or sentences, or paragraphs, the ba ang composition niya. But in translation, we call it as text types. Text type. So meaning, what text? What type is the text? Is it informative? Is it, um, is it expressive? Is it operative? So we are going to talk all of these things this afternoon. Okay. So if we could open. Open. Let me open, let me share. I'm using my phone this time. Let me open this. Um, oh, let me share this. Sorry, let me share this document to you. Uh, not in here. Mm hmm. Okay, ang screen nila kong ishare. Sige, pasensya. Isa man na asa kong screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one. Kara ra man no? Makita ra? Yes, miss. Okay, na ata di hay intended learning outcome. There are two classified texts for translation and explain the concept of translational 
uh, translatorial action, and the second one is to illustrate the Scopus theory in translating selected speeches from Filipino into English. Okay, imagine lang, let's just take into account na there is this kind of an advertisement in your school, in English ha, and Filipino and Cebuano texts. And supposedly, Magud, you will be creating an advertisement Unta, in a face-to-face -face interaction. You will be presenting this kind of an advertisement. And then presenting this, for example, um, you are promoting Royal, Royal through Orange. So basically, sa English or sa Filipino nga, katong iyahad yung official nga advertisement. And then, inyo tong i-translate ang inyohang um nga, nga napili nga product supposedly maot ay gina ang mahitabo but the thing is if imagine na lang sa unta sa nato sa pagkakaroon that you will be having an advertisement about um um a particular product or a drinks for example or a drink for example and then you are going to translate those things do you think the language that has been used exactly by the uh, from the source text to the target texts are the same okay so siguro no. possibly yes who, who is this this is Eflin yes, yes. yes Eflin go ahead oh uh, for me miss okay no okay like like, okay, like atong gipa buhat ni mga activity nga like translate put me og kanang advertisement kay daji words nga dili jud sa tong imong ingon na untranslatable aha untranslatable okay so mo na case sige mo na case na atay kita na atay kita wag og untranslatability nga 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 phenomenon diba so mo ni ang mo ni ang uh, Gitan uh, ni Katharina Reese nga uh, why there is a need uh, aside from sense for sense or or um, word for word translation nga uh, phenomenon nga nung kinahanglan man nga i-focus ang word for word translation ang um, sense for sense translation how about if we are communicating this time um, giving the emphasis on the communicative aspect of the texts of the language kay for example, spoken poetry, and then the language ng gigamit is Filipino, and then ang mga recipient or receiver of the message cannot speak of a Filipino, doesn't know about Filipino language or Tagalog language. Nasulisod ka ayo, so mo na iyang kitan ao how these things can iyang communicative approach or we call it as functional approach uh, be used in a context of or in communication. So, mauni ang foresee ni Katharina Riz. By the way, si Katharina Riz, di ay, Katharina, Katharina Riz, Katharina Riz, um, he has a lot of works in terms of translation and in literature. And if you wanted to explore more of his equivalence, equivalence, uh, uh, there is this um, theory of, of Katharina Riz, nga ning focus, but good siya, aside from, from this functional theory, ning focus, but siya sayang equivalence effect, or what is the equivalence effect of the, of the language. Kanang, before anything else, ako sang i-admit ning, the rest ha, nag-share ba ko og screen, uh, let me admit, let me allow them to enter the admit no um okay asani tara admit all sa janeline og si alkaide all right so balik na ko presentation now what you will learn about uh, this afternoon's this afternoon's um um session is about functional theories of translation number one the one that i've I uh, would like to focus on is text type theory. Now again, ang text type theory, it is used to describe the texts in translation. If you are using a literary or an artwork in literature, you call it as literary piece. If you are analyzing a material related to language, we call it as, as transcript, for example, or you call it as a sentences or, or paragraphs, okay? So if you are analyzing a particular material um, related to theater, so you, you have the script, 
no? They have the script, the material. But um, when we do translating and we are analyzing a text, we call it as text type. What type is the text? Anna, theory niya. So for Katharina Rees, he called, uh, she called it as text type theory. Um, he wanted to emphasize a functional approach, which means that he wanted to give emphasis to the communicative aspect of the material. So that is why he has these categories, four categories, informative text type, expressive operative text type, and audio media text approach. Now, basically from the word itself, informative, meaning to give facts, opinions, details, okay? Though in translation, this most likely mo focus yes, uh, literature ng aspect or, or, or the aesthetic value, pero naabod siya um, text types na ay, uh, yes, na text types na giving facts and, and plainly um, giving us the message, probably what has been uh, what is the message that has been transcribed or, or transpired or given by the sender of the message? So in ana siyang uh, information. So meaning, meaning to say, ang iyahang gihatag is technically the information, reality, based from evidences. Okay, so mauna siya iyahang characteristics. Another thing is ang iyahang text type, which must be transmit the full referential or conceptual content of the ST. Meaning to say the translation should be in plain prose without redundancy and the use of explication or, or explicitation with, when required. Why? Because this has something to do with the explanation of reality, giving evidences. No, so examples of which are news, right? incident reports. Now, by this incident report in a workplace, or it could be that incident or accident report in the road, on sana roadside bakaha na nagbanga. So probably kana siya nga incident report or accident report. Nya ang imuham namang gay uban nga from ang iyang ST is. Um, Sibane Visayan, he wanted to transfer it to the uh, Filipino Filipino language. So technically, because language basically is diverse, iya yun ang ivari. So mausab gud siya. Okay, so kana siya nga concept itself, giving information, giving uh, full blast facts and reality. So technically, ni describe siya og what we call as informative text type. Okay, next one is expressive. This time we got to, we have to know the aesthetic value. Okay, the, the, uh, probably the different, um, uh, what's it called? Can mga simili, hyper, mga, uh, nakalimot ng kusurm, simili, mga hyperbole, and oh, hyperbole antanan, kana sila, mga figurative languages. Okay, all of those things. Um, um, ang ilahang meter, ang ilahang, ang ilahang, ang ilahang, ang ilahang, ang ilahang measurement, ilang rhythm, tanan, sa Osaka pom. Okay, because we are looking after with the aesthetic dimension of the language. The author or the sender this time is the foregrounded and as well as form of the message. Okay. For grounded, is this new? Is this word new to you? For grounded, okay. Sige, ano lang. For grounded, uh, this is also another term um, that is usually coined or that refers to uh, um, uh, how would I call it? A word in literature, ha? Huh? A word that gives or that has an emphasis on something. Okay, kaya naamang good, uh, naamang good uh, instances nga when we do reading a literature and um, we see it at one reading na to, kay simple, kay very plain, very ordinary. But the moment that we reread and we reread the piece, there's the time that, ah, this is the emphasis of the poem. These words gives emphasis to the whole connotation of the poem. Or might as well, this word gives an implication to the totality or the, we call it as for groundedness of the, of, the, of the poem. So meaning to say, ang aesthetic value niya is present. 
kay when you do the reading of a literary piece, um, naamangit siya'y word niya, makayun ka nga, this word speaks of the noun, speaks of the subject prior to the sentence. Ana. So, pag magamit ni mo siya nga foregrounded, uh, actually, this is actually a theory put of another person. But, Mora siyag phenomenon ba nga mohatag siyag emphasis on how aesthetic or how beautiful is the word or how um, how well chosen are the words by the sender in ana siya. So, um, in addition as well, the TT should transmit the aesthetic and artistic form of the ST. So see, the translation should use the identifying method and the translator adapting the standpoint of the ST of the author. So technically, expressive man siya, you've got to know the beauty of the, the sender, of the sender's message, or the sender's standpoint in ana. Kay, kay, kay gikuha mangun ni mo, or kung gianalyze mangun ni mo, or this is the text, or this is the material that will give colors to the conversation, to the translation. In Anna. So, ang operative text type po, and the third um, text type niya, um, Catherine Reese would like to, to, to inform that um, 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 in, in some aspects, text types can be um, in a form of conversation. We have scripts. We have, yes, conversations. We also have dialogues. We have um, convo or texting. Uh, mga convo conversation or conversation in you within uh, using messenger for example using um, your cellular phones in Anna because he wanted to emphasize that the TT should produce the desired response in the TT receiver so that makes it operative okay operative meaning operation it's a process it's the dialogic Okay, and then the fourth one is audio medu medial, audio sound medial media. Okay, um, examples are films and visuals and spoken advertisements. They supplement the other three functions like images, music, and the rest because this is audio, the sound, and the media. Okay, so what does the TT would like to tell us, or Katarina would like to tell us? The TT required the supplementary method, supplementing written words and visual image, images and music, because um, this has something to do with the visualization. So images, characters, shapes, tables, and other visual effects should be carefully chosen and well prepared. Kay aron siya attractive because it speaks of something mampod. Uh, it adds flavors and meaning to the text type. Okay, so maone siya ang four. These are the four text type categories: um, informative, expressive, operative, and audio med medial. Um, because of this presence of text type theory, Katharina Reese would like to um, give us criteria. Now, why there is a need for a criteria? After knowing the text type theory, theory she wanted to know how should these things be evaluated. How should informative, expressive, operative, and audio medial text be evaluated as to what category man should these things be evaluated? Okay, eh, kabantay mo kani informative, very broad kisha nga aspect. Lagi giving information. But the thing is, how should I, for example, if I am the one who is analyzing, who do the analysis, how would I analyze an informative text types? In what sense? Okay, so he has this separate uh, criteria to emphasize that these text types also are subject to evaluation. Okay, there are two, intra and extra linguistic. Intra meaning within the texts, okay, within text type. Extra meaning outside the text type. Examples, the intra linguistic criteria are the following semantic level lexical level grammatical and stylistic features semantics is the study of meaning meaning if the uh, if the poet is using a pen 
and he is also using the word life. So probably how's the pen related with life? Inana siya entra. So meaning mogamit na ka atong aesthetic na value or expressive. So probably this text is expressive na value. So you've got the the uh, semantic level man, you get the meaning, you've got the word, and then you analyze or you associate the 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 meaning of the word. Nya present, nya based from text, ha? Huh? Based from text, ta. Okay, this entra man linguistic. Okay, ang grammatic, ang lexical po, meaning the words used. Naawa siya association sa one word to another use. Grammatical or the, the, the sentence patterns or the stanzas nga gigamit. And if prose in yung gigamit, um, na, um, kay na mo gay sentences nga ang ihang subject na sa babaw na sa prior to the um, sentence nga existing ex uh, sentence. So the tendency is ma get lost sa reader and expecting that this idea is. The same with the previous sentence, but na a writer, labi na gyud og freestyle nga writing, he used this kind of subject, but his subject or her subject referring to the prior or before pagid siya nga subject nga preceding sa katunga sentence, sa existing nga sentence. So, mo na, lisud ka ayun na, mo na tanawunun po gyud if you're doing the intralinguistic criteria. And of course, stylistic features. Stylistic features, uh, go with Nisha with a foregrounded theory because you're getting the style. Now, how are you going to get this style? Um, this is advantageous if you are analyzing texts from um, from an author. Meaning, for example, if Lindy Dalo, he has this, uh, she has this a lot of of um, write ups. Write up one, uh, write up number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. And from there, you've got to get the style of Eflin Dodalo's work. Okay, but you cannot get, this is the style of a particular person if you're just analyzing one text. Kay style mangud siya. So this is a style. Meaning if the word is used, if this is word, if this word exists, for example, um, Amping kanunay. The word is used in this particular paragraph or particular piece. And then another set of, of piece, the word also uh, is present, then that is his style. And then the other piece na put, present na put ang words, and that is, that is his style. So in Anna, because we get the, the ang, ang style mangud is getting the consistency, whether mapa words man siya, mapa write ups, ma style of writing man siya, or yang organization of words, or ang yang flow of the presentation of the uh, of the sana, of the story, maguna bakaron si flashbacking, na ulahi bakaron si flashbacking, ang ah, maoni trademark niya, ang ah, maogida niyang style. So makaingon tanga, that is the style. <laughs> that is the style of the um, writer or the translator. Okay, so listen, listen, ni siya intra linguistic criteria, but this is advantageous because all answers are present on the texts. You are basing all answers on the texts. Okay, however, the extra linguistic criteria, this talks about the situation. Subject field, time, place, receiver, the sender, the affection, I mean, the affective implication, or it could be the humor, the irony, and the emotion. Extra, meaning outside the texts, okay? So probably this talks about the, um, the scenery. Na I texts, na I for example, sa, sa, sa Bible, talking about the Bible, no, not the Bible, lang tanang Bible, kay very holy kayo. We will be talking about siguro mga news. News, niya, na ay mana, good, na amang gina si venue or, or ang place or ang setting. Siguro, i describe na ni mo diha extra language, like how was the setting? Who were, I mean, what is the setting? I mean, Unsa may nahitabo sa mga kahoy, sa mga sa mga managpalibot ana nga setting which also uh, has a value to the whole whole sa na whole translation. Kay mo, mo epekto mangud siya mo epekto siya if you are giving emphasis on I mean if you are including this um extra linguistic criteria to your translation. 
kay mohatag gid siya more kwan pod more meaning meaning to the uh, translation so i guess ang doha ang trans, uh, doha criteria are just understandable man siguro intra and extra linguistic criteria Okay, so na anshay kana sa obos. Those are just just the discussion of the text type theory and the intra and the extra linguistic uh, criteria of of Katharina Rees. Again, I would like to reiterate that uh, for Katharina Rees, she has these uh, four um, text type main text type. We have um, we have informative, expressive, operative, and audio med medial, but he wanted to know how to evaluate those text types. So he or she has this um, criteria. She built a criteria um, which talks about intra and, and extra linguistic criteria. Okay. So na apute mga examples de sa obos no na ay mga words nga gigamit. Ang text type approach, one of uh, uh, the main advantages is to move translation theory beyond, beyond lower linguistic levels towards a consideration of the communicative purpose of the translation. One of the criticisms, basically, because um, there is this question of why there are only three types of language functions. Um, actually, there are four language functions. Consistency of the material, inconsistency of the material. Okay, so there is the need to add emphatic function covering language that maintains a contact between parties involved in a communication. Okay, so nakabantay mo kanina these three moto kong ginu no na Katharina Rees has 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 ha. I mean, she, I mean she has in her mind about the informative text types, expressive, operative, and audio medial, which speaks of probably the 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 source text. But you could have the um, um, the question now is how to transpose or how to bring this one to the translation process. Okay, so um, hold on for a while. Ha, I'll I'll get back to every one of you for a moment.
Hi! Hi everyone! I'm back! Are you guys still there? Probably you're still there, no? And um, I will just continue. Anyways, this is a recorded video. And whenever you have missed something, um, you can just um, look this after, siguro, no? Or I will just post this one on the Google Classroom for everyone's sake. Okay, so allow me to continue then. Woohoo! Laban. This time, uh, we'll talk about the tax type approach. Again, uh, for Katharina Reese, he made mention of the he made mention of the functional systemic, I mean functional theory of the translation. He wanted to emphasize that the translation should not only be as 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 lenient, but as as, as a material lang for, for any further analysis. But he wanted to be of, of as a process at the same time kind of a, um, giving emphasis on the communicate a communicative uh, aspect of the piece of the material the text type so for fatic can a word nga fatic communication this is coming from roman jacobson and um, giving emphasis on the emotion or the appeal or the, the the feelings yes of the appeal of the material of the communication process and this is what also what um katharina Reese would like to emphasize okay he we, uh, we have an example here the greeting of phrase, ladies and gentlemen, is used to signal the start of a formal speech. Okay, for example number two, business and financial texts in English contain simple and complex metaphors. So some of these have a fixed translation in another language, but the more complex and individualistic metaphors do not. This implies that the translation of the business text into English requires more than just attention to the informative value of the source text, since such a method could create an English TT or text type that is lacking in expressive function of the language. So you have coexistence and the translation method are also employed. Translation actions Kanisha actually are are comprehensible lang when when you already have this idea na of what Katharina Riz would like to tell us. All of these things are opinions or are are, are, are contributions of Katharina Riz in the field of translation. Actually, he made has or she has this kind of translation actions. He used to refer translation actions into a concept from communicative theory and action theory, which aims to provide a model and guidelines applicable to wide range of professional translations situations. In fact, this views translation as purpose-driven, outcome-oriented human interaction and focuses on the process of translation as message transmitter compounds involving intercultural transfer. Why? Because of the word action, because he calls it as a communicative process, a phatic action, a phatic communication. So this must purpose-driven, outcome-oriented, okay? So, kaning mga the initiator, the commissioner are actually well, um, well explained, daman siguro niya, and also comprehensible, meaning gigi identify niya or gigi describe niya what he is or who is the initiator, what do you mean by the commissioner, the ST producer, the TT producer, the TT user, the TT receiver, the text type. We call it a text type producer, text type user, text type receiver, and of course, the example. Okay, okay, since Katharina is emphasizing tra translational action, meaning uh, behavioral, so yeah, he seeks of, of, of a process. Dapat siya in a dialogue, dapat siya dili static, no, dapat active siya, di lang siya passive. Okay, so we, uh, the, the, the process should have a purpose then. Okay, the translation should have a purpose then. For um, Vermeer, he called it as scopus. Everything or anything that uh, translation process has its purpose, or meaning the purpose of the translation process, the Vermeer called it as scopus. 
Okay, for translation, um, he wanted to mean that Scopus theory, meaning all translation process, or mean, meaning when you do the translation, there must be a purpose. Okay, this agree or construe to the idea of Catherine Rees of, of bringing text type in a communicative context. All right, so na amoy terms diha nga na arapud si Scopus theory. What is Scopus theory? Who are involved? What are the terms connoted or denoted to the word Scopus theory? And of course, the the um, the people involving, I mean, the people or the things or the the concerned um, involving the Scopus theory. There are also rules um, when it comes to Scopus theory, no? or, or I mean. Um, in translation process, meaning you have now the TT or you have the text type at hand and you ask for somebody's help to do the translation, okay? And then there must be, prior to the, the calling of somebody or the commissioner to ask you or to help you for the translation, you also need to have a purpose of why you are translating, Okay, it could be for business or advertisement. It could be for um, personal growth. Okay, if you wanted to learn something, learn the language, learn the poem, learn their language. Okay, so because you wanted to immerse to their locality or to their society. So you wanted, you have this kind of purpose which no one could ever get it from you, even the commissioner, because you are the one who demands for the translation as the source text creator. Okay, so see, you have their translatum or the text type for, for um, functional. Uh, ni Catherine Rees, he called it as text type. For Scopus theory, ni Vermeer, he called it as translatum. Okay. A TT or a TT or I mean, um, text type is an offering of information in a target culture. And I uh, know the, the, the target text is an offering of information. And the target language concerning an offer of information in a source culture and the source language. So a target text should or does not initiate an offer of information in a clearly reversible way. So, dili gid maguna ang target texts. Kaya naagid tay purpose of why si, si, si creator sa source text is doing the, the translation. It's asking for the commissioner for the translation. Okay, so a TT must be internally coherent. Uh, this is a very big issue put. What's the difference between coherence and cohesion? See, ato na, ato na exam ha. Self-discovery lang na. What is the difference between coherence and cohesion? So, inyohan ang tanawin dito later on. Of what is really the difference of the, are these two the same? How do they, they differ? What are the examples of coherence and cohesion? Do the do these two words refer to the same context or do does it need of another context? Okay, now ni nato niya. A PT must be coherent with the ST. There are also five rules that would speak of the hierarchical order. Na atay, ang hierarchical order, order di ay, uh, we have the synonymy, metonymy, antonymy, di ba? Na amantay mga mimi and all the me. Na apod tay, uh, hierarchical order na, na insta, uh, focusing on a specific term. Say, for example, in a literary piece, uh, you could, uh, sana, na I word nga familial, familial, familial background, for example. Juana is looking for a familial, uh, Juana has his familial culture and uh, from the father of the mother and uh, blah, blah, blah. So basically, kung ay na magsugod sa ubos, ni sugod to ni, ni Juana, and then go to the father, to the mother, then to the grandparents, for example, or then going to the familial, na term. Okay, so meaning nagkotay-kotay siya na asya hierarchy. So from there, you could see asaman si metonymy, ani as synonymy, ani ha, asaman ani nga mga categories. Okay, so makita ra po yun na siya. Um, explore on the theory of uh, of this one, kaning si Scopus theory. And then uh, we can see the the purpose of why somebody is 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 trying to to translate 
no? And the hierarchy order of the material or of the context or even the word get nga present in a material. Okay, so na atay goal. Again, do not translate if you don't know the purpose or if you don't know the goal. Okay, that is really basic. Why you are translating? Because of the aside from learning the process of translation, siguro, there must be the purpose yet of why you do the translation. Okay. So if you are translating food, if you are the one who is asked or you are tasked to do the translation, um, always consider the deadline and the target culture. Kai, when you do the translation and somebody is setting you into tomorrow's deadline or the deadline, so your mind or the the, the your mind really speaks of you really have to do this. I mean, Marabag giving you of an idea of this must be done tomorrow or this must be done in at night para wala na ko na una on tomorrow. Nganong mo mo kay nganong kinaman ninyo i consider because um uh, ang ang flow of words nga mo gawas sa inyong una una or ang words nga inyong magamit mo vary man siya sa target nga culture. Okay, na ang gani mga iring din nga mapuspusan ako ba. Kiss. So kana siya. So kana ha, mo na inyong tanawunon pud so set the goal or set the purpose and remember to consider the different um, considerations such as or conditions such as the deadline and the fee. If you can translate or so, for sure, na gid tay fee. No, um, can you po? This is actually valuable. Can you saman tama ka ingon yung um, nindot ni siya ng uh, kana sana uh, sana business area po. Na yung mga researches, um, to be honest, na ay qualitative ng mga research has um who has uh, who needs focus group discussion okay meaning the researchers are immersed to the locality or to the community and then for sure the language that they are using are the language that they are usually using meaning their first language meaning the si community or the members of the community or members of the focus group discussion are using the language of their own not of the language of the researchers Okay, so the tendency is the the event needs transcription or transcribing method. So na asi um, secretary mo record sa tanan ng mga gihisgutan, and then ikaw nga si translator. If you are meaning if ikaw si transcriber mo, uh, whatever have been said. Um, I put into writing na nimo, and then if there is a need for verification, then nagi somebody in authority nga mo verify the truthfulness of the transcription. That's one. After which is na amana siya sa the same language, meaning kung si Buano Visayan, si Buano Visayan po ding transcribe. Okay. That's basically transcription, or uh, transcribing. Okay, but the translation occurs when you do the when you transfer the source text or the source language, yes, the source text to the target language, which is English, um, in the effect that you are uh, that English is the medium for the medium for researches, researches, diba? So magamit gihapon siya ang translation process. Again, um, unsa may imong buhaton, you have to set in your mind what is the purpose of why you are um, setting because lagi kay. Diba na manta sa language pod na manta yung registers. So kung, kung magamit ka, kung makaibaw ka, kung sa may purpose of your translation, so maka-analyze ka nga, ah, words must be carefully chosen. Words must be technical. Bili lang, dritso-dritso nga, mauni siya ang translation effect. Ma kay mauni siya ang purpose, okay. For entertainment, gani, you have the freedom to translate for entertainment purposes. Okay, pero lagi, as a translator, you consider the target culture. All right. So naan natay practice diha mga kaygalaan. What will you create? Create a short poem about yourself in the English language. Translate to either Cebuano or Filipino language. After which, you guys analyze, or you are going to analyze um, your material, whether text type basia or scopus or what is the purpose of your trans uh, translation 
So, basing lang gun mo, base lang mo sa text type na theory or scopus na theory. Ina na ra gun niya, na ra may analysis gamay. Ina na ra siya. So, probably, ang na, kung naaman ganit may table, you use the table above. Kani siya. Or no, a separate table gid that describes of of what type is the text. If it is a poem, then probably it is expressive text types. Okay, and then get all the aesthetic values or mga foregrounded characteristics niya if it is a poem. Okay, or if it is a, a, a product of poetry. No? So if it's a news, for example, you're creating a news, then probably Mavari Pudzia. So kana lang uh ato lang po ng pagatan awon. So in anarag siya, you create a poem and then analyze the poem. Katin yung analysis, mo na to ay nyo ibutang sa FL1 nga quiz. But of course, copy in town po sa inyong preview sa inyong poem kay di man ko ka analyze tanaw pa pungko but for my convenience lang if you could do it for my convenience copy the poem and then um analyze the poem kay mao man na siya ang gibutang na sa ko ano dito sa tong Google Classroom na di ba we have FL2 FL1 here for the functional theories and then you can see give five takeaways in each theories the text type theory and the scopus theories analyze and construct the poem using text type theory and scopus theory Okay, so in your again, describe what is the text type theory and uh, and uh, kana lang may na na simple roman siya di lang kasi tantong komplikita dang kung gipa gipahim sa niyo moral nang siya og um uh, unsa may nakatunan ninyo ani ng uh, mga theories si scopus og si uh, text type theories okay questions everyone. Please. Ang katong FL1 nga 40 points miss kay ang poem ra to or apil na ang translated nga kuan nga text Ap oh. apil na man to dai murag apil na to siya ansha ha let me check sa akong instruction ha FL1 um, nga activity Okay, contemplate, inhale. Ah, okay. What is the best? Okay. Pom ragi de akong na ingon. Gosh. Sige, sige. Contemplate, inhale, and exhale and try to rediscover your potential to become what you want and make a five sentence of palm about yourself. Reflect on this question and what is the best in me that I can share to the world. Whew. So technically, wala gide siya translation ako na butang, no? Sige. Sige lang. That's the poem. Maola na. I would like to stick to what oh, is please. my instruction. Kay lahiin man kayo nakapas na raba ni si Eflin. Di ba? Kapas na kaday. Nakapas na ning uban o niya. Um, Mag-change na po instruction na na si Eflin, si Meredith, si Stephanie. No? Ning pasan ni si... Nana po ganit ko nagraduhan. Ano niya? Uh, yes. Okay. So, kana, we will just stick to the instruction as to the creation of the poem. No longer of the translation. Rather, sa inyohang FL1, let me check, wala pa mampod. Um, moto, inyohang i-analyze inyong na-construct na poem. And then, uh, do the trans uh, tra trans translation from from one language for example Cebuano Visayan to English and then do the analysis for part 2 kaning area for part 2 analyze the constructed poem okay sige yes. na answer ra dai na answer ra mo question yes miss yeah Cebuano to English ya jud miss Ideally, you could have other languages. Kung ano lang ka ng comfortable nyo nga language, o niya, ka ng inyong naibawaan yun nga language. Pero if ganahan mo nga, if you love to create it in a Korean or in a Japanese, sige, paningkamutan ni teacher nga makahibalo po din ang mga buta nga, no? Usually, yun, ang ako naibawaan yun, the 
dialects ragin na si Buana Visayan, the the Filipino, the English, ana but the, the other languages aside from the Asian lang I mean, Asian languages wala pagid ko kaayo na siguro sa Japanese very few pagid kay nga words nga kung na katunan or nahibaw-an but not that good nga kaibaw ko mo tabi or kaibaw ko mo gamit sa sentences or sa words in a sentences mga in ana so kanaman na sila characters when it comes to the alphabet or letters no nya yeah, kita po na po tagigulong letters but it translation mo differ man guna siya labi na na good when you do the purpose of translation kay for example sa like, sibisaya gani ang ko ari ka sa news na i transcribe mo english maguna man gid ang ang verb ang predicate uh, before ang subject gipatay si Juana Juana was killed Diba? Usually, na naman, mo differ good siya. How much more of other languages na siya, no? So, mo na, tanaw nun sa na to. Sige lang, if you have other languages there on the table, I cannot do anything about it, but of course, welcome those languages. Okay? So, what's in your mind, man, if Lynn, you wanted to translate it into other languages aside from the one that you know na? Dilimis <laughs> ay, okay. Mas uh, lisudan ko sa Visaya God, I guess, mag-Filipino na siguro ko. <laughs> okay. Sige, let's see. Lisudan ko sa Visaya. Sige, let's see. Tanaw na ito. Alright, other questions aside from Eflin's? Dagan yung tigpubuhi diri. Ay, nako naman. Sige, wala na yung question. Wala na. Sige. After ani ni topic, ma-proceed na ko ha, mga kahigalaan sa buhat. <laughs> kahigalaan sa buhat. Ma-proceed na ko. Allow me to proceed. Sige. Yes naman siguro. Wala may po yung mga violent reaction siguro. Alright. Allow me to proceed. After ani ni nga topic, there is, there is another one last topic for the before final examination. Uh, unsa man siya. Ang inyong ang topic na next is about systemic functional uh, theory. Ang kaning systemic functional theory, this has something to do with Halliday. Kanig si Halliday, the 100 kanisya contribution uh, when it comes to language and literature and of course translation. Si Michael Halliday, he has this systemic functional linguistics. Okay, na apo po laing mga studies about the translation process. Uh, why these two are being attached to the translation? Because we want to bring translation in the aspect of in communicative competence or communicative situation. Now, we have this concept of communicative or communication situation, meaning we use this material or text type or, or a, uh, a material to 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 murabag to get out from murabag imong i- isulti imong i-communicate sa sa laing users of language no so mo na gamit po sa translation no um mo ni pud yang concept na siya mga terms and terminologies sige balik ko na nako ha kung we use the term uh, literary piece if we are using a material related to literature for for function i mean for functional theory of katharina Rees, he used a term to describe a material uh, he he has uh, she has this term of text type theory in in a spoken word i mean in in spoken uh, material we have this word of this course Okay, this course material, which means this speaks of a communicative process. Okay, whether it is written or spoken. So, naman uh, tayo, uh, spoken discourse or written discourse. So, doha man na siya. So, ari na po na magtigi how these two are well defined by Michael Halliday later on. So, kana siyang tanan niya, mga hisgutan, ano nang pagahisgutan next year. Kaya wala na po tayo topic next year. Sa'yo kita mahuman, no? Kung ito nang hisgutan ng mga panahuna. Since we have only two topics remaining, I would like to suggest na you do this activity kaninga kang Katharina Reese within 
the month of December, and then the month of January until third day, I mean, third week of January, probably makahumana ta ni Michael Halliday and other proponents referring to the systemic functional uh, linguistics or functional translation. Okay, so ang target nato is we could have two outputs per lesson, lesson uh, module 5 and module 6, and then one output for your final examination. I will not give you a, a final examination nga written siya nga, kanabitang objective nga type, but rather I will ask for an analysis. Kay, kung mag siya, it needs of equality man to look into a particular text type or a material. So, hatagan siguro ta mo, probably ang inyo hang mag, magkuan sa ko ha, magnita sa ko uh, uh, sana, uh, piece or material niya mo niyang gamitin para i-analyze niyo ang text using uh, functional and systemic nga theory ni Catherine Reis ni Holiday. Inana lang and then compilation of the two would be your project. Ana lang di lang ta complicate kay for sure there are a lot of things pa pud ni inyong i-accomplish. Okay? So, is there any question so far? Are everything clear na this time? Dili na kay siya tantong libog or are we having the same um wavelength na dili na siya tantong laag-laag atong mga huna-huna? Hopefully, no. Um, the rest of the class were able to know what the different concepts of Catherine Reese and um, bowlers of the different proponents in the field of translation. Okay, okay, okay. Sige, can I go on? Can I ask for somebody how to lead us into a closing prayer? Who is around? Who is available this time? Sige. We have here, can I call somebody? Sige. Sige, ako na lang. Mm, sige, ako. <laughs> Ka cute. Sige. Everyone, bitaw. Or... Okay, Ramo. Murag hilom. Lagi kayo mo karong panahuna, no? Sige, hilom mo. Good siguro ng class niya. Anyways... In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Loving Father, thank you very much for this afternoon, Lord, for giving us wonderful afternoon with good people around. Lord, may you bless them with gift of knowledge, understanding, and patience, and perseverance, so that they may be able to continue and finish the course until the last um, day of their um, academic year 2020-2021. Lord, bless them with gift of of um, support, the family support, and of course, the people around, good people around, that they may be able to continue the life that you want them to be. And bless them and allow them to continue to work for their dreams, Lord. This we give you thanks and asks in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. ABL2. I believe too. Thank you very much for coming and see you on the next uh, virtual conference or virtual meeting. Bye, everyone. Goodbye, Miss. Thank you, Miss. Thank Bye, you. Miss. Goodbye. Thank you. Hello, wait. Sa hawak, ginwananingo ganina. Sige na. Bye-bye.